Hey everyone, this is Dieworm with a Zoomer build for Last Epoch, the Speedy Shaman. If you are enjoying Last Epoch, consider subscribing. I have tons of videos on this game to help you out. Let's start with the build philosophy of the Speedy Shaman. This character has one main purpose, and that is farming the monolith of fate. I'm a big fan of creating builds for a purpose, and this one is no exception. I invested many hours into this build, as always, both in terms of doing the campaign and in terms of farming endgame at high level, and I'm confident that this build will serve you well. We are relying on two things basically, speed and AoE. We get speed from various resources, passives, gear and skill nodes. You can definitely go faster than this if you want and I've tried various options here but ultimately there is a balance between speed, doing enough damage and survivability. Because you're pretty fast, you're automatically avoiding more hits, which means you don't take massive amounts of damage. You're far away from enemies as well and you should never be in melee range, reducing melee physical hits and avoiding incoming damage that way. Occasionally we stun, freeze and chill enemies, adding some more protective layers to the build. What's also a big advantage is that this build isn't optimized in terms of items. In other words, I am making this build work with suboptimal gear. That's great because it means you don't need perfect rolls to enable this build. No special items are required either, no fancy uniques. It's all very accessible and new player friendly, which definitely isn't true for all of my builds. Getting through the campaign was not hard either as soon as you have access to Maelstrom, but we will cover the leveling bit later on. I've been running monoliths up to timeline 40 at level 75 rather consistently as you can see in the footage. At some point in time the damage and modifiers just get too crazy, but you should be able to farm some very decent loot using this build. It's fast, it's freezing, it's a lot of fun too. Let's look at the passives. Generally speaking, you're looking for adaptive spell damage, percentage spell damage, flat gold damage, maybe a bit of movement speed and some survival stats. Attunement is decent, but not amazing. Adaptive spell damage definitely helps the most in terms of damage. This means you take 8 out of 8 natural attunement, because attunement provides a bit of damage, some defenses and you get an additional 32 elemental protection. 5 out of 5 Tempest Born, mainly for the cold damage, but at the start a lot of spells deal physical damage as well, so this nopes helps you while leveling. 6 out of 6 Wisdom of the Wild for the spell damage. Finally, 1 point left, which we put in Thorn Bond because we will be summoning totems every now and then. I experimented a bit with putting points in the druid tree for attunement, but found that it is really not worth it, so everything goes into shaman. Take 8 out of 8 shamanic infusion, mainly for the mana regen, which is really nice to have, 2 out of 8 ancient stones for a bit of spell damage, 8 out of 8 earthen supremacy for attunement and stun avoidance, you take 2 points in windbringer, which you will fill up later, those 2 points get you to shattered heavens for 10 flat cold damage, which is really really good. I can't emphasize enough how important the flat damage is, which is why adaptive spell damage, which is also flat damage, is such a massive increase in DPS. That is why you want a rune in awe, 8 out of 8 for 16 adaptive spell damage. You take elemental shrines, 10 out of 10 ultimately, but not straight away, to get more attunement and some flat health. Sky armor is an amazing note for our build, providing movement speed and flat armor. You take swirling maelstrom, because we get an additional chance to cast this spell, plus some extra mana which is super useful and I took ascendant circle because we have a chance to summon five thorn totems when we get hit so with this note that means 200% additional spell damage in boss fights and in tricky situations because those are the times you get hit which is when you need it the most. If you would level even further beyond level 75 where I am at now, you could go more defensive on your totems, protective circle is great adding a bunch of resistances and tricky spots, maelstrom is good too for more resistances and a little bit of extra damage because penetration doesn't do much in the current version of the game. And that is it for the passives on skill specialization. The zoomer has one primary skill which you will be constantly casting, everything else is complementary to that primary skill which is of course maelstrom. Maelstrom is a skill that has a casting time, which we want to get rid of because it slows you down a lot. Maelstrom also has notes that if you stack enough Maelstroms you get bonuses. These two skill properties determine our specialization path. While leveling I would try to get the Sudden Gale as soon as you can, because of the quality of life it offers. For endgame here are the notes. 
3 out of 3 Whirlpool because more stacks durations means easier stacking. Then 2 out of 3 Sleet Footed because dodge is nice and we need 2 points to get to 4 out of 4 Calm because mana efficiency is amazing. Mana issues can and will occur for sure here because we're constantly casting so you need mana efficiency, a healthy mana pool and regen ideally. Then 2 out of 5 Arctic Blast which doesn't do much so we can get to Sudden Gale which allows you to cast Maelstrom instantly. You can now just keep your finger on the skill hotkey and start stacking those maelstroms. Then we go for the bonuses. 4 out of 5 turbulence, increasing damage but also mana cost. We need 4 points however to get to windswept which offers movement speed at 6 stacks of maelstrom. It's very significant this buff and it is super nice to have. You may need to tune your gear a little bit to be able to pull off 6 stacks either in terms of mana or cooldown reduction but make sure you can sustain the 6 stacks. It's more important than doing damage on Honestly, we can fix damage later. The final point, 3 out of 5, are in turmoil, increasing the AoE, allowing you to hit more enemies and stay further away from enemies, which is very healthy. Next, Tornado. We primarily take this for a little bit of extra movement speed and a little bit of extra damage. Go right first to Aspect of the Storm, which grants movement speed. Take 1 out of 3 Storm Dervish, only so you can get to 4 out of 5 Swift Wings, increasing the movement speed buff. 4 out of 4 Gust of Renewal provides mana regen, making this spell actually profitable in terms of mana, so now this becomes a source of mana. Go left, 3 out of 4 to Lasting Storm, increasing tornado duration. 4 out of 4 Hurricane, which really doesn't do that much, but we want Eye of the Storm so that we become the Eye of the Storm and the tornado surrounds us while we are walking. It deals a bit of AoE damage in addition to Maelstrom, which I guess is nice. Finally, we turn the spell from a physical to an elemental spell, fire in this case, so it benefits more from bonuses to elemental damage which we have in our kit. That means 1 out of 3 Stormbringer, just to get to the final note, Fire Tornado, which turns this whole thing into a fire tornado. The spell now deals fire damage, and not only that, it also changed the appearance of the spell, and I must say, it looks pretty cool. Our third spell is Avalanche. Main purpose of this spell is to generate a lot of extra damage when we need it. At some point in time you may be able to come up with a build that can sustain continuous casting of avalanche as well, but until you pull that off, just cast it when needed, at bosses or at those shrines in the monolith. Because we're moving fast, we need avalanche to keep up. Normally this is a stationary channeled spell, but we're turning this into something that follows us around, just like tornado, and that is cast instantly. Go left to mountain peak, making this happen. Then precision, which doesn't do much, but we need it to get to wild path, getting rid of the channeling aspect. Because channeling is basically a death wish. We want to move, not stand still, after all. At this point in time, Avalanche is very expensive, so take 4 out of 4 naturally occurring for mana efficiency. 1 point in Hailstorm makes the whole thing follow you around, which is amazing. To finish this section, take 3 points in Unyielding Storm, increasing the duration. We need more mana efficiency, so we go bottom left. 3 points in Harsh Winter for some more damage. 1 point in Heavy Snow, only to get to 5 out of 5 Winter Buildup. An essential node in the build, because we're already spamming Maelstrom and Tornado, and we need all the mana and mana efficiency we can get. The last two skills are supportive skills, starting with Ice Thorns. Ice Thorns is cool because it can autocast. It also happens to do a lot of damage in our case because we're a spell damage cold build and it provides a very good buff. That's the primary reason we choose this skill. For this route, go north, 2 out of 5 cold prison, just to get to 4 out of 4 farwood hard. Whenever we use or cast Ice Thorns, we get a buff, increasing cold damage by 100%. That's pretty good, especially because we're self-casting this skill when we get hit. For auto-cast defense purposes, go bottom right. 3 points in Dagger Thorns, just to get 2 out of 2 Bramble Armor, giving us a 20% chance to cast Ice Thorns when hit. Take Spell Thorns for an additional 20%, for a total of 40% casting when you get hit. Go left, 1 out of 3 Anemophily, just to get to Thorn Shield, providing armor and cold res. We have a few more points here, so we might as well get defensive notes. The final 2 points are in Bark Shield, increasing the buffs a little bit. Emblem of Might is an option you have. I am wearing a two-handed staff, 
have, which I suggest you do as well, making this skill free to use. If you have enough fingers left, you could cast a few ice thorns yourself and they would be free, allowing for a bit of versatility. It's not required, however. Last skill, thorn totems. The sole purpose of this one is to summon as many totems as we can when we get hit, so we benefit from the stats in our passive tree. In the end, a plus 200% increased spell damage, which is very significant. To self cast, we use idols, so you won't find that in skill tree. We just spec into a bunch of long lasting healthy totems, starting north with 3 out of 3 forested expanse, that is more totems, 4 out of 4 eternal forest, making them last longer, and also take a grove mind so all your totems are summoned in one fell swoop. Go right, 4 out of 5 cooldown reduction. It doesn't do much for self casting, which doesn't seem to have a cooldown timer, but just in case you want to cast the totems yourself, you can do this now more often and benefit from the bonuses more frequently. Take these points at the end though, they're not very important. Go left, 2 out of 4 ancient power, increasing damage but mostly getting you to oaken protection, 5 out of 5, increasing totem health so they live longer, providing you your bonuses longer. And finally, because you have the point anyway put that in guided thorns making the totems shoot a little homing missiles looks cool something you notice well is the mastery of shaman which doubles elemental protections whenever you have an active totem which makes you suddenly very defensive whenever you have a totem out therefore you primarily want to invest in vitality as you mainly need other resistances to be on par with the elemental ones this build doesn't require much in terms of gear i suggest you try to solve your mana issues first Craft mana efficiency on your amulet, get flat mana as well. Mana regen on a staff is super good, but I don't even have that right now. Then make sure you can reliably cast 6 millstrums. You may need a bit of additional cooldown reduction to pull that off. Cast speed doesn't do an awful lot for this build because you are limited by the cooldown timer of millstrum and not so much by the time it takes to cast a skill as we have this on an instant cast. Don't worry too much about damage on your gear but focus on defenses. They're much more important because the monolith enemies aren't hard to kill if you pick the correct modifiers, meaning don't give them health or protections. So get glancing blow capped, take some crit strike avoidance, get movement speed on boots and make sure you have a staff with a ton of adaptive spell damage because that is really all you need. Percentage spell damage, percentage cold damage and percentage damage over time are secondary because they really don't add significant numbers to your damage output. Then for the idols, it is important to get a few that summon thorn totems on hit, meaning that if you get hit there's a chance you summon 5 thorn totems which then provide a lot of buffs. I have 2 idols giving me only 13% chance but it is still pretty consistent because in tricky situations you're taking a lot of small hits in the monolith meaning those totems will spawn. I took cold damage multipliers for my idols as well giving me roughly 170% cold damage from the idols. It sounds like a lot but do some testing on a dummy and you will notice it's really not all that significant. I also have the new unique relic equipped using Nui's sphere to see how it would do don't use it, it sucks for this build. I'll make a character around this thing at some point in time, but this is pretty bad. A bit about leveling, at the very start you can do whatever you want, ice thorns work plus a wolf or something, it doesn't matter. Very soon you will have access to maelstrom and then the fun starts. Take that, use it, get the instant casting note, cry about mana issues and just make your way through the campaign. You can make it rather easily by following this guide and getting a good updated staff and protections. Maelstrom in itself does plenty of damage and monsters in the campaign generally speaking are not very tanky. Once you have access to them you can pick up more skills. You will notice however that you will suffer from mana issues even more. So my usual advice is for any build to get the mana efficiency nodes sorted out first and try to get some mana and region and efficiency on your gear because it will help you out a lot and it offers huge quality of life. With a setup like that the campaign should be a breeze. It was for me at least. Finally, the playstyle during endgame. Here's the build in action. Milstrom has a bit of a ramp up time. I have my finger on the skill hotkey continuously, by the way, in case you're wondering. It never leaves the skill, so I'm always casting. If I feel like it, I cast the occasional fire tornado because it does make you a bit faster and returns mana. Avalanche only really comes out when it is absolutely necessary because I need my mana for Milstrom. You typically only cast Avalanche when encountering a boss or a shrine or when you are in an arena with just a ton of monsters. 
and you will notice that Avalanche lags behind a bit, so it follows you with a second delay or something. Take that into account as you move. If enemies are chasing you, this is perfect. If not, you may need to position yourself so that the avalanche boulders land on the enemies. It takes a bit of practice, but it's not too difficult to do. And then it's really just zooming through the maps. You can full clear monolith runs really fast and smooth with this and it feels good. Once you get the hang of the basics with Maelstrom, Tornado and Avalanche, you can incorporate the Thorn Totems and Ice Thorns to perfectly time your additional buffs when you need them the most. Then you will be a true pro zoomer. Also, I would not recommend the arena with this. It may look like it could do well, but enemies get too tanky in there, you don't have enough defenses, and most importantly, you don't have enough room to run around. I hardly made it to wave 100. This is not an arena build, you have been warned. For now, I hope you have fun with the build and that the guide was useful. Thanks so much for watching and making it to the end. Love you all, see you all soon, bye bye.